who can. Elizabeth, do you know all the words to? To, to oh, you broke up, Ben. All the words that Mariah Carey uh, Christmas song. Oh, come on, man. You're going to put me on the spot? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> I've seen Love Actually uh, like a million times. So that's where I, that's where I learned the words. I did watch that probably six times last Christmas. Great movie though. It's one of the best. What's your favorite Christmas movie, Caroline? If it's not that, it's got to be Elf. Elf, oh my it. gosh. <laughs> I love Elf. My dad would kill me for not saying it's a wonderful life. So if, if this gets back to him, it's a wonderful life. Yeah, I like, I'm a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, big time. I think I saw a couple of different Uncle Eddie's over uh, Halloween. Yeah, I think we had one at the Ad Cellar in office, actually. That's right, awesome. we did. I think it's a good time for us to go ahead and get started. Looks like we've got a solid group of attendees so far. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for taking the time out of your day today to join us. My name is Ben Balslog. I am the Vice President of Business Development for Ad Cellarant. I am joined by two of my amazing colleagues today. I've got Elizabeth Bernberg, Director of Business Development, as well as one of our celebrity guests, who I'm super excited to have on the phone today, uh, Caroline Kiernan, one of our Senior Account Managers with Ed Celerant. Uh, just an amazing crew today. Great lineup. I'm, I'm the coach, but great lineup for, for the uh, webinar today. Uh, today's webinar, we are going to be talking a little bit about our digital guide to the holiday shopping season. A lot of us have these uh, advertisers that we're working with. You know, most advertisers are actually making almost half of their annual revenues during this three month time span uh, in Q4. It's an important time to make sure that their digital footprint is there. They have the branding, they have the presence, everything that they need. And so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with this. We did start with introductions already. Uh, we'll definitely uh, dive a little bit more into Caroline's background in just a few minutes. But we do have some bonus points available for today. Um, you know, when we think about the engagement that we have on these webinars, we'd love to make sure that we're not just dropping knowledge, but we're helping people retain that too. And so um, what we're doing for today is we are actually going to be handing out a couple of, you know, virtually handing it out virtually. Uh, some Amazon gift cards to those people who have the best questions on the webinar for today. So uh, we would love to see the engagement. Uh, your, judge, your, your judges panel is right here in front of you, uh, Elizabeth, myself, and Caroline. And after the webinar, we will decide on who had the best questions and remind folks to continue asking those. We do love the engagement. Um, we'll talk a little bit about who Ed Sarn is, what we do, how we do it, all the fun stuff. But then we'll dive into the great stuff too about how we're empowering our sales teams for a great go-to market strategy. You know, digital products that work best for holiday sales. We're going to talk a little bit about and share some of our tried and true digital strategies for local advertisers. Why local matters so much, especially now more than ever before. You know, during this unprecedented time as COVID is starting to loosen its grip on our world, uh, we need to make sure that we're supporting our local communities. And then lastly, we'll round it out with holidays to prepare for after the holidays. Uh, it's going to be a nice, fun one today. Feel free to ask as many questions, great ones, as you'd like, and you'll get your uh, chance to enter into the um, Amazon gift card that we're handing out today, too. A couple of them. So when I get started here, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Adson. We're actually a technology and digital advertising company, and we're focused on making quality digital marketing accessible to every business. At Cellarant, based in Denver, Colorado, we do have a few people on the team who are now remote due to this uh, COVID pandemic that we have. So we've got some amazing experts uh, across the United States. Um, we are an award-winning tech-enabled services company and we have a proprietary total digital agency software solution. Uh, a lot of you who may be current partners in the call today know that as UI.marketing. Everything from the pre-sales process, building your proposals, your strategies, into the execution and reporting, we like to tie all that together within a single 
toolkit for you. Ed Summer has been nominated uh, on Inc. Magazine's top 5,000 fastest growing companies four years in a row. And what that means to me is that each and every single one of the individuals on our team are purposeful in their execution. It's not just me. It's not just Elizabeth. It's not just Caroline. Uh, I see each and every single one of our team members bending over backwards to make sure that our partners are supported to be successful in what they're doing today. We do work with a little over 400 local media companies and ad agencies across the world, primarily in the United States, but we do have a small international footprint right now. Uh, you know, the end goal is for total world domination, but you know, that might be a few Christmases from now. Um, we are executing on a massive amount of campaigns regularly every single year, and we do them really, really well. Um, our partners leverage the Ed Summer platform for tons of different digital advertising capabilities. I think we've got about 64 products within our product suite right now and a handful that will be unwrapping uh, or that are wrapped up under the Christmas tree right now. Um, everything from programmatic display to SEO services. Uh, as a Google Premier partner, we do offer the best paid search on either side of the Mississippi River. Um, we've got some pretty cool and creepy geofencing capabilities that we're going to talk a little bit more about today, an email platform that's incredible, and all sorts of other things. But to tie it all together in a nutshell, we're providing, and I would say mostly Caroline, she's the all-star for today, you know, a lot of sales enablement for our partners, uh, everything from sales materials to pitch decks to talk tracks, you know, even joining in on client-facing uh, calls as a white labeled resource to make sure we can help get that deal across the finish line. We move it on to execution where the majority of our team is comprised of. Uh, we have a very unique approach to our execution and fulfillment. I'm pretty sure we are the only one in the industry. I've never heard of anybody else that does this, but we actually pay our operations people like salespeople. So if they run a better performing campaign for you and your clients, we're the ones that give, give them bigger holiday bonuses. Um, and then lastly, you know, we tie it together with a fully transparent, white labeled and pedestrian level dashboard so that you're easily able to tell a story of success for your clients and advertisers. So our partners are leveraging our cutting edge technology to access these Madison Avenue level digital advertising capabilities and our professional services to support their clients and their advertisers goals and objectives and to grow revenue for themselves as well. As we get started into the real meat potatoes of this presentation, which we're really excited about, you know, it starts with empowering your sales team, empowering yourselves and setting yourselves up for success, thinking about the story that we're going to tell. And I'd like to lean into Elizabeth here a little bit to talk a little bit about, you know, what did 2020 look like and how are we going to prepare ourselves and our salespeople now to have those conversations with uh, these advertisers over these next several weeks? Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. And a reminder, questions, questions, guys, as we keep going through this. Um, but I mean, right, 2020, that seems like forever ago, but also yesterday. Um, it was a total unprecedented year uh, for every single one of us. And when it comes to holidays, um, it, it was a, a new place for all of your clients to be in. How are they maximizing exposure? How are they further supporting that consumer? Find the products, find the services that they need. Um, so really important to understand what it was like in your marketplace, right? So here are just a couple elements to keep in mind uh, when we're talking about pre-Cyber Week and what kind of growth that we even saw prior to that awesome event and everyone kind of maximizing their, uh, their wallet and credit card spend for the holidays during that particular timeline. People started earlier. People have started their shopping for holiday seasons even earlier, as, earlier, as early as even October. We've also seen such a huge surge with e-commerce um, and new ways for these purchases to be made, whether it's through a social platform, it's through a website, Easy ways to pick up the uh, to pick up the products, curbside delivery, um, new options for the end consumer. So these are going to be some really important things to keep in mind as you're setting up your team up for success. Or they're probably already out there in market um, talking with customers, but you need to make sure that you have a well executed plan so that you are able to have that revenue success. Your clients are able to see that in success in terms of their revenue and their growth during the holiday season. So it sounds like right now is a perfect time to be going after some of those advertising dollars. I know a lot of clients or excuse me, a lot of advertisers 
have the last bits of their marketing budgets to use right now, this is a great way to get them to leverage some of these great tactics to, you know, really fill out their holiday sales for the year. You know, as we continue to plan ahead for these 2021 holidays, Caroline, uh, let me make a quick introduction for you. Caroline Kiernan, one of our senior account managers for Ed Sarn. I think you got a handful of years with Ed Sarn. Not only is Caroline a uh, account manager for Ed Sarn, just like Elizabeth, you used to be a partner of Ed Sarn's. So you, you got a taste of the Kool-Aid over here and you, you joined the squad, which is really great. We appreciate it. Tell us how you're preparing your teams and the salespeople that you're working with to have a more successful holiday season. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, so honestly, it, this started a couple of months ago already. And and while it's not too late to start thinking about it now, we've really had the wheels in motion, in, like I said, for a few months at this point. Um, we at Accelerant, we've been sending out emails with holiday packages and ideas. Um, we've been looking at year over year stats and maybe what to expect for this year. Um, and then, like we mentioned earlier in the presentation, you know, we're really getting in the trenches with your sellers. You know, I want to be on sales calls. I want to be hosting webinars and seminars. Um, just yesterday with one of my largest partners, we did a seller wide webinar where we went through a deck that, that really highlighted how to think ahead and how to get creative with, uh, you know, enabling these sellers to, to really close some holiday related packages. So at the end of the day, you know, what I want to do is make sure that we're working side by side with you and your team to get ahead for the 2021 holidays, but 2022 and beyond. Um, it's, it's never too early to start looking at that. Um, in addition, sorry, oh, I, I actually <laughs> get that too early. I was going to sit here. I'm trying to unmute my stuff. I apologize. So when we think about, you know, how we're enabling ourselves and preparing for this now, there's a couple of stats here I think are really important to share. 85% and it, it goes along with actually what Elizabeth said, you know, e-commerce grew immensely last year. It really did. But we still see 85% of our holiday shoppers are planning to shop in store. That's another huge reason why local is so important. We see these things have, or we see these things like the supply chain um, issues going on, things like that. We want to make sure that we're supporting our local communities, making sure that we have gifts to put under the tree. And a lot of those local businesses that we have are going to be, uh, you know, ripe for the picking in terms of being able to provide those types of products to our clients. I think, you know, in 2020, holiday digital sales topped $1.1 trillion. It's insane. You know, I think it's up almost 15% from the year before. It was a bit of an unprecedented year, but it's actually continuing to trend in an upward fashion for all these things. Um, although a lot of people may have had some sort of a pause in their holiday spending last year, um, it didn't mean that they were not going to spend it. They were saving it for when they were ready to spend it. So, uh, those things are absolutely ready to go. Caroline, what kind of holidays have you been preparing for? And also, what are your favorite holidays on this list? <laughs> well, aside, of, aside from mentally preparing for the chaos that ensues around Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, um, from a marketing perspective, I really love Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, those are fire drill type holidays where we have so many opportunities to get these last minute deals in front of all of your advertisers, consumers, like that. Um, we'll go into product mixes. We'll go into, you know, what we suggest to help these advertisers accomplish those goals. But there's nothing like the adrenaline that that kind of go, gets flowing with those days that lead up to both Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, one other point that I really want to hit home with this particular slide is I think we all get really caught up in the holidays that we celebrate and our friends celebrate. And it's so important to think about it, this from a business owner's perspective as well. There are plenty of other holidays out there that matter and that, that people are focusing on. So I think it's, you know, I challenge everybody on this call to broaden your own horizons a little bit and, and educate ourselves to make sure that we can help all types of businesses accomplish those goals for, for whatever holiday season they're in. Keep in mind your single friends on the 11th of this month, 11, 11, make a wish. I wish that they could find the love of their life. Um, I think, you know, we have a couple of really good questions coming in so far. Um, I see one from Tina, what product mix are you finding the best success with and for with retail holidays and how is ROI being measured? We're actually going to dive into that in just a few moments, Tina. So thanks a lot. That's a great question. One other one that I think we can uh, knock out real quick. Uh, Andrew asks, do we know what's causing that 85% shoppers to return in person? 
and we do. Um, it's COVID kind of loosening its grip on our economy these days. You know, we see that, you know, the Delta variant is actually at a, you know, it's, it's on a downward trend as well. So people are just eager to get out of their homes, get out of just the bubbles that they've been living in um, and going out to spend that, you know, $500 bonus or what they've been saving on commuting and, and just going out and being able to spend that in person at these places. Another small attribute would be to uh, seeing the supply chain and demand kind of issues going on. We have all these container ships sitting out and what is it, uh, Los Angeles and Orange County outside in the Bay and the Pacific, you know, they're having a hard time getting a lot of those products over from, uh, from overseas. And so our local businesses are seeing that they have a lot more stock than what some of these larger chains might actually have. So a couple of those would be, or a couple of those pieces will be contributing to that 85% uh, shoppers returning in person. If I may also add to that too, I mean, think about yeah. last year as well. We, uh, we were, you know, that was our not even our first year into COVID. Uh, people weren't with their families. They weren't with their friends. They didn't spend Thanksgiving together. They weren't traveling for Christmas. Now we're at a place that we can finally do that. So in all honesty, and I'm speaking for myself right now here, I'm ready to open up the wallet, right? To make this really so incredibly special and meaningful for my family, for my friends. And this is when your advertisers can, of course, um, you know, latch onto that. Uh, ben mentioned earlier, tapping onto kind of the emotional aspect of it, um, that they need this right now. Customers and your clients, they want to be able to really, um, you know, to really connect with their family and friends this year more so than ever. Uh, your advertisers need to be in front of them. Make sure that they're coming to their store. That's a great point, Elizabeth. And we think about every different walk of life too. I mean, you're a different person than me and Caroline. Um, think about everybody's needs and how they want those pieces. Um, as we transition to this next piece, I did see one question. Tammy asked, how quickly can you guys get a campaign up and running? Uh, at a maximum, three business days, once all assets are turned into us, are we typically turn it over actually much quicker. So you could probably have something live, same day, maybe the next day, but three business days at a maximum. Uh, it's definitely something to keep in mind as we continue to think about, hey, how can we get these things going and how do we get these in this month? And Ben, just to add to that, that's a question I get every single day, multiple times a day. As Ben mentioned, it's once all assets are in. That's when we, we really are able to obviously get things up and running and, and we'll do our best to help you get your hands on those assets. But please keep in mind that that's a key part of getting that campaign up and running. Ron just asked, how will consumer behavior be different in 2021? I think this is a really good question. Um, one of the things that I've been seeing is that it is going to be, especially in person, they're going to be shopping a lot more local than they are with these much larger brands and stores. Although we do see uh, quite a bit of e-commerce purchases going on right now too, it's so difficult to get those products in hand by Christmas these days that a lot of people are just sticking with those local places. Uh, Elizabeth or Caroline, do you guys have any other feedback on that question? No, I, I I would echo that, and even really just echo what I you know what I mentioned before or earlier. The consumer behavior is going to be uh, what we've already even seen with the the surge of of pre kind of holiday sales in October, even in September. Um, this was happening. We were running campaigns for a lot of our clients, kind of getting it, getting prepared for Halloween, getting prepared for Thanksgiving. People are going to be doubling down um, right now um, because uh, because it's just an exciting time. So that in terms of behavior, it's going to be exponential. Uh, everything is more spending, more gatherings, more events, more outside, more. Definitely. Um, I'm going to start diving into some more of these digital products for holiday sales. And I see a lot of really good questions going on right now. We're going to keep addressing some of those as we go, but we'll also save some for the end here. Um, Caroline, tell us how some of our partners, some of our best partners are leveraging things like device ID or device ID targeting to support their local advertisers. Of course. So although Halloween may have come and gone already, uh, we are able to stay creepy all year round with this type of targeting where we can, you know, really prove to you who has seen our advertisements and then come into your business. Um, one of the most popular ways of leveraging this is going after, you know, your competitors. Um, for instance, if you have a small or medium sized business that really wants to get in front of um, their main competitors audience, 
we can draw geofences around those locations, grab those device IDs, send them ads, and drive them into your advertisers' uh, brick and mortar. So that's probably the most popular way, most common way that this is utilized. Um, but that's not to say that there are, aren't plenty of other ways to do it. Um, and again, for specifically holiday planning, device ID, whether it be programmatically or through Facebook, is one of the most popular approaches um, that, that we're able to use to show success. I think that's great. Coupling it with that Facebook. Facebook is huge. I've got a problem with Facebook, you guys. It's typically the last thing that I you know, spend my time on at the end of the day when I'm in bed. Facebook is going to be big. So if you can give them that one-two punch, like Caroline's mentioning here, I think it's a great way to come at your target customer from all angles. Last minute sales, programmatic email, Caroline, who was the last, uh, who was the last business that you guys sold a little bit of programmatic email for? How did that go for them? Let's, well, about 25 minutes ago, we sold a programmatic email to a local um, Christmas light company where they wanted to get in front of folks who had, you know, were making $150,000 a year or more in a couple of certain zip codes. We were able to get that message out. So I'll be sure to report back on the success there. Um, but from, you know, historic knowledge, this is one of the best ways to get a quick and easy message out there. Um, we're able to assist in creative needs for this particular product. So, you know, if you don't have that in-house design uh, available, but, but for anything last minute or for anything visual, we're really trying to, to get the picture across. Programmatic email is my favorite go-to. Um, the other thing I really like to make sure everybody is clear about when it comes to programmatic email is we're not purchasing a list and we're not sending an email to your client's existing list. We're expanding that audience. We're going after people who have similar interests, who have opted in to receive communication. Um, and we're really able to you know, broaden the net um, as far as getting new potential customers for your advertiser with this product. Awesome. I think we can definitely share some of those analytics after the blast is sent out. Uh, I see some other great questions in here. Do you have talking points? We're going to share a lot of these things. Not only are we going to share the deck, but we have a couple of leave behinds for y'all that we're going to share in follow up to the entire crew who's uh, attending and registered here for today. Um, so this is going to be a great way to kind of get started. Uh, I see there was a question about cost and pricing there. We can definitely share that with you here in a moment too. Hey, Elizabeth. Ben. Yeah, oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. Would you mind um, skipping back over, shimming back over my friend to the email? I Just a couple little elements. Um, I, I, For those of you who have been on webinars that I've been on, I might be sounding like a broken record here, but I think it's, it's important to remind everyone how um, how email is such a great tactic and solution, um, not only for your sellers that might be green. Caroline brought up a really great point. Uh, we use email every single day, communication, personally, professionally, whatever. We understand the functionality of it, how it works. So getting your green sellers, your novices um, to kind of uh, understand the, the sizzle of digital and the, the real opportunity that, that's available to them and to their advertisers, have them lean into a solution like email. The other side of that coin for any of your clients who might be hesitant to really get involved in the digital space, or they're not sure exactly how, um, you know, or can't wrap their brain around how programmatic display works um, and, and understand the functionality of that, they do have an email. They understand how that works. So this solution is gonna be a fantastic, almost starter tactic um, that's gonna enable them to Caroline's point to extend their reach, to go outside of their core database um, and really have a great prospecting tool to bring more business into their website, into their brick and mortar building. I think my email is the first thing I, I look at every single day just to see what's stacked up since I went to bed the night before and what can I look at. I, it's a great way to get in front of those people and provide a, not just one little message, but a message about your entire product suite. Maybe you have several deals, maybe you have several products. I think it's a great way. So great points to make there. Going local, and we're gonna dive into this in just a little bit more, but local SEO. Why do we need local SEO, Elizabeth? Oh man, Look, do, where do you wanna be found? <laughs> Literally, that, that's the rhetorical question here. Uh, do you want your clients to, to have a presence and be found when people are actively searching for products and services in their area? Local SEO is, is that go-to product. We like to say, Ben, what do we do when we need to look for something? We need to find something. 
GTS. You Google that stuff. Case in point, uh, this is exactly that solution that's incredibly cost effective, that's incredibly sticky as well. Um, it's a longer term solution, but this is really going to enable you to have that, uh, that front page presence, essentially, for consumers who are actively looking for a certain, you know, cool, hot toy for this season or a great place to, to get their lights put up for the holiday. Uh, they're going to be looking and searching in Google for these kinds of businesses. Local SEO is going to be a great solution to have as literally a, a foundation um, to their ongoing digital campaigns that are complementing what they're already doing uh, with you as their media partner, whether it's print, whether it's broadcast. This is going to be a great go-to solution for the longevity uh, of your clients, uh, you know, being in business. They plan to be on business longer than three months, Local SEO enables them to really own that space um, month over month over month and take advantage of people searching for those um, searching for those products. I think that this is great. You know, we're seeing some really good questions coming up too. You know, uh, I want to make sure people also understand this is not just for retailers. This is not just for your restaurants. Think about other companies like service companies, like the like the uh, Christmas light company. Um, I live in New Orleans and I had to deal with Hurricane Ida recently. I went to Google, I need a new roof. Local listings are the ones that I'm focusing on first and foremost. So those services companies is actually a great way to kind of provide this for them as well. We're getting a lot of questions around minimums or around um, you know, pricing and if it can be one month or a couple months long, we're gonna dive into that in just a few moments here. Uh, so thank you all very much for the, uh, the great questions that we're talking about. Local news retargeting though. This is one of my favorite products because this is not just an Ed Summer product. This is really showcasing what our local media companies and that local journalism really does and, and kind of provides to support your communities. Elizabeth, can you tell me a little bit more about local news retargeting and how it supports that local readership and, and, and helps those advertisers who are really loyal to them? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, this really, uh, the crux of it all is tied to your website to your core uh, website visitors, whether you're a news and information site, or um, maybe you're focusing on a particular, you know, content, if it's weather, if it's sports, but you are driving qualified consumers to your website, they come to you for a reason. You're known in the marketplace, they trust you as a resource from a journalism perspective, from a content uh, perspective. And right now in Q4, I'm sure you all are probably seeing a surge of that website traffic, people coming to learn more about uh, events in the neighborhood, in the community that are around maybe the holiday time frame, or what is weather going to look like? Hey, I have family coming in, uh, driving in for Thanksgiving. What, you know, what are conditions going to be looking like over the next few weeks? You are seeing right now that surge in that website traffic. And what better way to further support your advertisers than connecting them with people who are loyal to your website, who are coming to your website. That's your first party and proprietary audience right there packaging local news retargeting with your current campaigns that you're running, that's going to be a really turnkey solution for your sellers, but also great way for you um, to kind of lean into your audience as that key element that will support your advertisers reach their marketing goals and objectives this holiday season. I think, you know, I was actually not just talking with Caroline, but a couple of the other account managers on our team. You know, we have several partners of ours who are actually selling out of their own uh, display banner inventory on their own websites. They say, you know, that, that's all we got. I'm sorry, we got nothing else for you. This is a great way to extend that reach to that exact same audience and get those banner ads to those same people, maybe just on different websites, though is a great way to kind of maximize your presence and extend the reach to that exact same super loyal audience that you have. So a lot of really great points I think you made right there too, Elizabeth. Um, tried and true digital strategies. I know there's been a couple of questions of, you know, how do we package it? How do we put it together? What's it going to cost? I think we can dive down into this a little bit more. Um, Caroline, will you divulge a little bit about, you know, how we come across or how we build these strategies? And then we'll dive into some of the ways that we put them together. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that that one thing that myself and my account coordinator, what we try not to do is take a stab in the dark. 
we really want to have a conversation with you, with your seller, with your advertiser, and figure out what the best approach is to accomplish the goal that they have. Um, oftentimes, and I've been guilty of this myself plenty of times, um, we assume, we think that we know what the advertiser is trying to get based off of you know, that discovery conversation. Um, but when you really are able to, to look your advertiser in the eye and ask, what is your goal? What is the end game here? that's when we're able to put together the best proposal possible. Um, and we actually, as a part of the follow-up, we do have a couple of great resources as far as getting to that answer. Um, and, and, and it even starts with prospecting. So I think that, you know, all in all, the, the most important thing is making sure that we're coming up with customized proposals and, and we're really start steering away from anything that's too cookie cutter. Definitely. So when we start, when we start talking about these holiday packages that we have, We'll start with the presence package. You know, let's start from the bottom up. We want to make sure we're being found. Caroline, tell us a little bit about this package. Yeah, and these again are all elements that we're incorporating into these customized proposals that we're creating for you. Um, as Ben mentioned just before, you know, this local one SEO is probably one of the most important products in the entire rate card or, or, or playbook, if you will, because you're being found on Google. Um, we really pride ourselves on working with small and medium-sized businesses. And this is a price range that most of them can swallow. Um, we, we really want to make sure that we're, that we are driving results for, you know, a reasonable dollar amount. Um, the other really great thing with local one is the reporting. We're able to show you and your advertiser, how many people are utilizing that Google, my business on a monthly, weekly basis, um, hitting on that driving directions button, tapping the call now button, uh, and, and really driving both foot traffic and online traffic to their business. I think that's great. So we've covered kind of the bottom half of the funnel, you know, making sure that we're found when people are finally looking for us. Let's talk a little bit more about the top or even the middle of the funnel too. How are we getting more people just to even walk into our store? Yeah, so this goes back to one of our favorite and creepiest products, that device ID, where we are drawing those geofences, manually drawing geofences around your advertiser's location, their competitors, similar locations. And then with our reporting showing you how many people came into your advertisers bri brick and mortar from this campaign. Um, this, as Ben mentioned, you know, sits maybe towards the top or middle of the funnel because we are driving, you know, some type of a conversion, but um, at, you know, we're, we're really just trying to, to put our money where our mouth is and prove to you what is coming of these campaigns. I like this one, especially when we think about, you know, I'm a, I'm big into the, uh, the orchestras, the, uh, was it the, Oh, it's like the steamroller group that plays all the great Christmas music. Trans-Siberian. Trans-Siberian Orchestra. That's right. Uh, they have a great one. But if, like, if you have clients that are in performing arts, even, you know, delivering ads to people who have been in other great events as well. I ran a campaign one time for, I think it was for a reggae concert coming up. We actually targeted the Snoop Dogg concert from a few weeks prior. It's a great way to get in front of that same hyper-targeted audience that you want to get in front of. Um, and this is a really fun way to do it and, and showing off the reporting that comes alongside this at foot traffic attribution and actualizing how many people were in your audience, saw your ads and then walked into your location is about as creepy, as cool as you can get. And you're actualizing ROI when you're doing that. Holiday packages, when we start tying all these things together. So, you know, awareness and reach. Elizabeth, talk a, a little bit about how we're tying these packages together and why it's important to make sure that you know, you're maximizing your own brand presence with these groups. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I think it's, it's important to know that there's no silver bullet with digital marketing. There's no silver bullet with any kind of marketing strategy. You've got to be really in all places at once. And us consumers, uh, we're fickle. And we're really fickle these days. So I love these bundled approaches because we really look at that sales funnel that was on one of those earlier slides. How can we make sure that we're supporting getting that consumer from that branding and awareness to that consideration phase to then conversion? That's where the rubber meets the road. That's when your client's gonna see that actualized ROI. And it is when all of these things come and start working together in tandem. Um, I love these two bundles right here because they're also incredibly cost effective effective. I think that's another huge element to really highlight with your sellers. Um, they, they might be get, getting, you know, 
Caroline mentioned the chaos of Q4. Absolutely. Um, no one's going to deny that it's not a crazy time of year, especially when you're supporting advertisers uh, and their marketing efforts. But you need to keep your sellers energized, engaged, and excited uh, about what they're doing um, from a platform and tactical standpoint. Having these easy turnkey solutions that are also going to be able to, you know, to have them grow their pipeline and have the sellers say, say yes, I can afford that. And guess what? With that conversion tracking, with device ID, with that targeted display reaching moms 25 to 45 years old who have kids under, in the household under the age of 10, I know focusing on this particular toy this holiday season, that's going to really help me get these flying off the shelf. These packages are meant to do exactly that. They're meant to drive that conversion. They're meant to drive that ROI. And the reporting side of it is going to be pretty darn awesome to see because you'll be able to really see and highlight how each of these elements supported one another to get that client to then either come to your store, come to your website, and make some kind of engagement with your advertiser's website. Remember, you got a couple different kids. You're probably getting pummeled with these types of ads right now. Dude, it's real. Um, the, the Santa lists, I want this, I'm looking at that. And of course, when I'm searching, right? When I'm searching for products and services, services, products, toys, uh, tech <laughs> that my kids are wanting, um, you're going to be retargeted, right? I've been getting a tons of retargeted ads um, while I'm looking at news and information sites. That's where this comes into play. People are tapping into my the locations that I've been to. Um, they know what kind of behaviors I'm exuding online um, because I'm seeing these very relevant ads when I'm going to other websites. Um, I'm sure you all have seen this as well yourselves. The, the time is now. Absolutely. And I just wanted to uh, point out, I had two really good questions that just came through. I think it's a good time to kind of put them together. Uh, how many locations can you include when you leverage device ID? If you're just doing a base package like this, we recommend maybe 15, 20 locations. You can do a little less if you want, but you can really have as many as you want as well. You just don't want to have too many and spread yourself too thin across them. And the second question is, how do you determine how the geofence is drawn? Uh, you know, Caroline mentioned it's a polygon. This is not a radius. We're drawing that specific polygon I don't care if it's got six sides, four sides, three, or whatever it's going to be, but it's around that business and that business specifically. Even if that business is in a strip mall or in the midst of a bunch of other businesses, we're making it very hyper-targeted. We can actually get down to a single square meter in terms of the, of the size of that polygon that we can actually create. Um, and there's another question here. Are you hearing any objections about the CPM to sell? Are you overcoming them? Absolutely, we're overcoming those objections over pricing because not only are we providing a premium product here, you're going to be proving it within your reporting as well. There is a slew of inventory quality uh, settings that we have, as well as quality differentiators that we provide in the Ad Summer platform and leveraging a DSP like the Trade Desk that is not available in all these other DSPs, which your competitors might be leveraging. So um, as a quick reminder, these are retail budgets that we're putting in front of you. So these are client facing numbers and your take home is probably about 50, 60% based off of what these are. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. These are absolutely uh, budgets that your advertisers can swallow. And lastly, my favorite set of these packages and just so everybody knows we are gonna be sharing all these with everybody. Caroline, Presence and promotion. These are the best ones. These are, I think, the most tried and true packages, and they work together so well to make sure that not only are we building our brand, building that promotion, reaching the audience, building our awareness, but actually being found in Google as well. Talk a little bit about these, please. Of course. This is absolutely my favorite section of packages, and it's because it perfectly replicates the marketing funnel. You know, we are, are working on that brand awareness at the top, and then we're working at driving conversions at the bottom, which is really what everybody's looking for when it comes to, to online advertising, whether they admit it or not. Um, the other great thing about these specific packages is they can start off as a holiday pitch. They can start off because you got your foot in the door because, you know, you know that advertiser needs to, to really hit the ground right now, but they can very quickly translate into an annual um, campaign. This is what most annual campaigns are built of so that they can you know, have, have sustained growth throughout the entire year. So if anything, this is the perfect time of year to be pitching these, these 
these exact packages to ensure that we can retain that business through the rest of 2022. Just, just you're throwing shivers down my spine talking about compounding revenue like that. Woo, it's getting hot in here. I love that. You know, we, we, we got to make sure that we're exemplifying and proving the success. You know, as Caroline said, start these things off now, prove that success, lock them in for another 12 months and then upsell them again if we can. You know, these are things that we want to work with you on. Uh, this is an amazing uh, retail success story that we have. Um, this was really the goal to was increase awareness and foot traffic to their stores. I believe this was actually for a coffee shop. And so what they did was they wanted to expand their reach among a growing number of cord cutters to complement some of the traditional TV advertising that they were already doing. So what they did was they actually leveraged things like device ID targeting, and they had a streaming TV component in here as well. You know, they want to hit a bunch of those hipsters too. But with a budget of roughly 6,500 bucks over the two months, uh, the campaign drove 5,700 unique visitors over this two month period. They did, ha did have several locations, just so everybody's understanding that. So it's not one giant location getting all these things, but they did track the foot traffic attribution across all of these different properties that they did have. Um, they saw a lift in about 12% uh, foot traffic month over month, estimating on average, you know, $10 per visit. They generated over 150 grand in revenue on the original um, investment that they made. So talk about ROI, I love it. Another retail case study we have here. You know, the goal here was to increase revenue during Black Friday weekend. We're leading right into this. This is one you guys should be taking and presenting right to your clients right now. The challenge, tracking multiple conversions and revenue streams. So what we did was we created a brand awareness uh, campaign where the advertiser put their entire budget actually into this programmatic display. And whether it's targeted display or maybe a device ID targeting as well. But this one, they really focused on the combination of geocontextual, behavioral, demographic, site, and search retargeting. They spent 15K on their campaign and generated $58,000 in revenue over the holiday weekend, which is the highest grossing weekend that they'd ever had to date. Their key findings was that site retargeting for that campaign was really driving an amazing audience and bringing those people who have already committed and shown at first level of interest, bringing them right back to the website, right back to the store so that they're able to come back and fulfill their needs, wants, or wishes to fill their kids' stockings with whatever that might have been. And so those are just a couple of case studies to get us going. You know, I do want to round it out. Why is local so important? You know, we talked about a lot of these things before and, you know, making sure that we're staying connected with our communities. We have things like Small Business Saturday. You know, we saw how the COVID pandemic affected so many of our mom and pop shops, those local businesses that our friends, our families are running in our communities. It's important to stay connected with them. But this is specifically focusing on that local SEO that we had here. You know, I like to pull a lot of these statistics out and actually provide them to you guys so we can talk about the importance of having that Google presence. First off, somebody who's actually being found on uh, locally within Google, you're 2.7 more likely, 2.7 times more likely to be considered reputable. You know, you have kind of a brand allegiance, or excuse me, a brand. Uh, ambassadorship with Google right there. They're the one promoting your business as well. You're seven times more likely to get clicks to your website. You're 70% more likely to attract visits and you're 50% more likely to get purchases based on these SEO efforts. We talked about this before, $200 per month. That's all it is. That's absolutely something that your advertisers are able to kind of take on. It's not ask them to spend an extra couple thousand dollars. It's easy to get started and make this happen. My favorite statistic about this, 80% of people who actually find this local listing and they click the visit or the directions or the call button will actually visit or call that business within 24 hours. So if you're able to provide reporting based off of that saying we actually in this one month time frame got 100 people to click on those two things, we can actually sit here and tell you 80 of them actually made it or called or interacted with your business one way or another. 
Local is a great way to make sure that you are you know, updating yourself, uh, sharing the different changes of your business. Maybe you have different hours for the holidays. Maybe you're offering delivery or reservations as well. Or have you added different relevant holiday categories to your Google My Business page? Ken asked a great one. Could you please tell Google stop rebranding this product? Ken, this is uh, you know not something that can be changed. Google is, you know, the internet is Google's sandbox. We need to play by their rules. And so this is a great way that we can do it very simply. Hey, Ben, I just want to reiterate that last uh, stat that you shared. 80% of people who tap that visit call business, or I'm sorry, they're 80% more likely to visit within 24 hours after tapping that button. Um, put yourself in, in you know, the consumer's shoes. I'm, I'm always checking the driving directions and how long it's going to take me to get somewhere. Um, and I think many other people are doing that. So when you're on that reporting call or you're on that prospecting call and you're able to, to really hit that home, um, it helps validate the reporting that we also share on the monthly basis. So just, just a, a great point that I love to share with all of my partners. Absolutely. And these are things that we're happy to walk through with your clients as well. You want to make sure that you're telling a story of success. Lean into people like Caroline, lean into Elizabeth, lean into myself. You have a full dedicated staff here to make sure that not only are you able to sell these things, but you're able to retain this business and make sure that you're telling that story of success. That's what we're absolutely here for. And so finally, as we round this out, you know, we've been talking so much about the holiday season. I am jing jingling away just thinking about how stoked i am about it but you know the clock doesn't stop ticking you know we we have new year's eve we have new year's day and it keeps going from there the world's not ending it's not y2k you know these are the same types of strategies that you can bring up to your clients now if they say you know what i've already got my holiday strategies put into place that's that's okay we can start talking to them about how we can support them through 2022 holidays to advertise for well, January sales, you know, Elizabeth, you know, maybe Van uh, doesn't need his $100 toy right now. Let's wait until it's 70 bucks in just a couple more weeks. You know, uh, he's going to get that no matter what. We'll do our best to put it under the Christmas tree. But think about those January sales that come on after those holidays are actually over. You have President's Day. You have Valentine's Day. Think about those. How many different types of businesses we can think about that would need Valentine specials? I can think of restaurants, flower shops, candy stores. I would even think about, you know, electrician. My wife would love a brand new chandelier. Uh, hopefully she can't hear me right now, but, you know, think about ways that you can support those different types of businesses. You have St. Patrick's Day. Maybe you want to help a bar or a brewery or even a liquor store. Actually, those are actually huge heading into the holiday season as well. Um, I know everybody likes to get liquored up every once in a while. This is a great way to make sure they're getting in front of the right group there, you know, getting the right eggnog. April Fool's Day, spring break, you know, 420 even. Uh, we have a cannabis network that leverages a lot of these exact same products, whether it's a uh, dispensary or a CBD business. It's a great way to think about how we can support those guys now. Lastly, you know, we're working months ahead of ourselves. Caroline, you mentioned at the beginning, you are helping your clients and your advertisers, you know, think about how to plan their marketing strategies three, four months in advance sometimes. Mayday, school's out, start to plan for vacations. This is a great way to start planning ahead and building your pipeline for the entire year. So we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for all of the wonderful questions. We will be sending out an email um, and we will reach out to a handful of you uh, who have asked some of our best and favorite questions for today. Now it's time for all of us to get back to work, get back into the Q4 crazies. We wish everybody the best of luck. I want to thank my co-hosts and my celebrity uh, judge for today, Caroline and Elizabeth. You guys rock. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Hope everyone. Have a wonderful holiday season.